Hey, what's up guys? I made a tutorial on how to code a register and login application without the need of a database. When we have a login system in our application, usually we store the user's data in a database. But in this video, I want to show you how we can do the same thing using a JSON file. Let's see a quick demo. On the right side in the screen, I have a register form with two fields, a username and a password field. Let's register a user. I'm going to set the username to Peter and the password to 1, 2, 3, and 4. By clicking on the register button, the application is going to send the data to the JSON file. We see that in the JSON file we have the username Peter and we see that the application has first hashed the password and then recorded it to the file. We never store raw passwords, ever. If we try to register a user with a same username, the application will throw an error. That means that every user will have a unique username. Let's register another one. This time we have the username Dennis and the password of 789 and 0. This time the user is added to the file. Now let's take a look at the login form and log in a user. Let's log in as Peter, but with a wrong password. We see that the application don't let us log in and throw us an error. Let's do it this time right. This time the application has redirected us to the user's account. In here we display the user's username and a logout button. Clicking on the logout button we will be redirected to the login page. Let's clear the screen and go to our project files. In front of me I have the JSON file in which the users are going to be stored. Notice that we have an empty array in the file. This is important. I need an array to hold the users. If I don't create an empty array in the file, the code will not work. Next, I have an index file. In this file we are going to have the register form. I have a login.php file, in which file we are going to code the login form. I have an account.php file. After a successful login, we are going to redirect the user in this page. Next, I have a register.class.php file. Here we are going to write a class to insert the users in the JSON file. Next, I have a login.class.php file. In here, we are going to write the login class. And last, I have a style sheet which applies the styles that you saw in the demo. I will not cover the CSS file. It's not important for this tutorial. And with all that being said, let's begin. I'm going to start from the index file and create the register form. First of all, I need a form element. The HTTP method is set to post and the action attribute is left empty. That means that the form will be submitted to the same page. Next, I will insert some information about the form. Next, I will create the username input field with a name attribute set to username. And after the username, I will have the password field with a name attribute set to password. Next, I will create a submit button with a name attribute set to submit. And last, I will put in the form two paragraph elements. The first p tag will have a class of error and will output any validation error and the second will have a class of success and will output the success message. Now I have to go to the top of the page and write some PHP code to catch the submitted form's data. First I will, requ I will require the registered class.php file. I need access to the register user class that, that I'm going to write there. Next, I'm going to check if someone clicked the submit button. If this is true, I will create a new register user object and I'm going to pass in the constructor, the username and the password that the form submits. I don't need anything else here to do. So let's go to the register.class file and create the register user class. First of all, I will define the class. Next, I'm going to create the properties that I will use throughout the class. I'm going to need a username property which will hold the posted username. I'm going to have a raw password property to store the posted password. I will have an encrypted password property which will hold the hashed password. Next, I will have an error and a success property. Next, I will have a property named storage which will hold the JSON file path. Next, I need a property that will hold all the users currently stored in the file. Next, I need a property that will hold the user's data, which is the username and the hashed password. 
and next I'm going to add the class methods. I need the classes constructor to initialize all my properties. Next I need a method to check if the input fields have values. Next I need a function to check if the username already exists in the file and last I need a function to insert the user in the file. Now let's start from the class constructor. The method takes two arguments, the username and the password, which we send from the index file. I will start assigning the values to the properties and I will begin with a username property. I will trim any white space from the beginning and the end of the username before I assign the value to the property. And also I will run the filter var function and sanitize the value. I will do the same thing with the password but I will write the whole action in one statement. I will pass in the filter var function the trim function with the password as an argument and then I will add the sanitize flag. Next I will encrypt the password. I will use the password hash function with the password default constant. I put as the first argument the string that I want to encrypt and as a second argument I will use the password default constant which will use the newest encryption method to hash the password. Next I will fetch all stored users from the JSON file and I will store them in the stored users property. I will write the whole statement in one line. I will use the JSON decode function because I need to convert the JSON data to an array so I can work with. As an argument I pass in the file get contents function which takes the file path as an argument and I will set the second argument of the JSON decode function to true. The keyword true will convert the data as an array. If we don't include it the function will return an object. In our case the stored users property is holding an array. And the last thing that I will do in the constructor is to assign an array with a username and the encrypted password to the new user property. Let's go now to the check field values method. In here I will use an if statement to check if the username or the password field is empty. If this is true I'm going to assign an error message to the error property and return false. Else the method will return true. Now let's go to the next method and check if the username exists in the file. I will use a for each function and loop through the stored users array and I will assign every user in the user variable. Inside the loop I will have an if statement and check if the username property matches any username from the file. If there is a match I will throw an error and return true. Now let's go to our last method and insert the user to the file. I will use an if statement to check if the username is available. If so I will use the array push function to add the new user to the array with the stored users. Next I will use the file put contents function to write the data to the file. The first argument is the files path and the second argument are the data that goes to the file. But I have to convert the array to a JSON string so I will use the JSON encode function and I will pass in as an argument the users array. Also as a second argument I will use the JSON pretty print flag. This will structure in a more readable way the file's data as we saw in the demo. And all this is wrapped in an if statement and if the file put contents function is successful I return a success message else I will return an error. Now I have to go back to the constructor and execute those methods. I will write another if statement and basically what I'm here saying is that if the input fields aren't empty then insert the user to the file. The last thing that I have to do is to go to the index file and echo out the error and success properties. Before we test out the code I spotted two errors that are made in the register class. In the constructor I must encrypt the wrap password property and in the username exists method I have to return false if the username doesn't exist in the file. Now we can check if the code works. Let's say username George and password 1, 2, 3 and 4. And there is our entry. Let's try to register the same user again. And we get an error. Let's try again with a different username. Nice, our register class is working fine. Now let's start coding the login section. Let's clear the screen and jump to the login.php file. The login form and the register form have exact the same structure 
so I will copy the register form and paste it in the login page. And change the title and the submit buttons text. Let's go to the top of the page to link the page with a login.class.php file and write the PHP code to catch the form's data. I will require the login.class.php file. And next, if a user clicks on the login button, I will catch the submitted user's data and I will create a new login user object and pass in the constructor and pass in the constructor the username and password. The login user class doesn't exist yet. So let's go to the login.class.php file and create it. First, I will define the class. Next, as I did in the register class, I will define the properties. I will have a username property, a password property, an error and success property, a property holding the JSONs file path, and an array property which will hold all the users that are stored in the JSON file. I forgot to mention earlier that the private properties can be accessed only from within the class and the properties set to public from anywhere. In our case here, the visibility scope of the error and success properties are set to public because I need to access them from inside the login form. Next, I have the class methods. Again, I need the class constructor to initialize the properties and execute the class methods. Next, I need a method which will run the validation, verify the password and log in the user. That's all I need in this class, those two methods. Let's go and write the constructor method. I will assign the incoming username to the username property and I will do the same thing with the password. Next, I will fetch all the users from the JSON file and store them as an array in the stored users property. And I'm done with the constructor. Now let's go to the logging method. I will start with an for each loop. I will loop through the stored users property and I will store every user in the user variable. Inside the loop, I will search for the incoming username. And if there is a match, I will use another if statement to verify the password. To verify the hashed password in the file, I have to use the password verify function. When I go back to the register class, you see that I have used the password hash function to encrypt the password. Those two functions are working together. When we use the password hash function to encrypt a password, we have to use the password to verify function to verify it. Now the password to verify function takes two arguments. The first argument is the plain password and the second argument is the hashed password. And if those two passwords match, the function returns true. Then I will start a session and set the username to a user session and I will redirect the user to the account.php page. But if there is a wrong username or password, I will throw an error. Notice that we are returning the error outside the for each loop. And last, I have to execute the logging method from inside the constructor. Now let's go to the account.php page and complete the logging process. In here, I will have some basic HTML content. I will have a title to welcome the user. Remember that the user is stored in a user session and I will have an A tag that will act as a logout button to log out the user. The href attribute will reload the same page, but it has a query string that says logout. I will catch that logout string at the top of the page and log out the user. Let's wrap those two elements in a header to make it nice and clear. And let's add some dummy text. Nice. Now let's go to the top of the file and write the PHP code. The first thing that I have to do is to start a session. Next, I will secure the page, so only logged in users can have access. I will check the user session, and if it is not set, I will redirect the user to the login page. Next, I will catch the logout query string. You see that I use here the get, the get HTTP method, not the post. If the user clicks on the logout button, I will unset the user session and redirect the user back to the login page. You can redirect the user in any page you like. And that's it. We finished the login and logout section. Now what's left is to check if the code works. Let's bring the browser and the login form in the screen. And let's see the users in the JSON file. First, I will leave the fields empty and click on the submit button. The validation works. 
Let's use now our own password. Again, we see an error. Now let's use the right password. And good, we are redirected to the account page. Now let's do a final test and log out. I'm going to press the log out button and we are back to the login page. That's it, our application works fine. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching guys.